Welcome, I'm Takis Kantos. Uh, I work here at the physics department of the École Normale Supérieure. Hi there. Ah, yes. We are going to talk about quantum mechanics. Uh, things can be a bit counterintuitive in that world. So in principle, uh, quantum mechanics only apply to the microscopic world. And what we are trying to do with the research we're doing here is to bring this microscopic world into the macroscopic world. In order to do so, what we are doing is to build a uh, device which is called a Cooper pair splitter which hopefully will exploit uh, uh, some of the basic laws of quantum mechanics. Okay, come in, I'm gonna show you. Oh, no, I forgot. So we're working with a single electron spin. Spin is like charge for the electron, but it's another quantum degree of freedom that we cannot find in a classical world and that's very interesting for doing any kind of quantum experiment. If you go on a hiking trip, you can look at your compass and this compass has got an arrow telling you where the north is. So in the same way we'd like to draw our spin as an arrow, except this arrow is pointing in a 3D space and it's not telling us about north or south is telling us about some information carried by this spin. If you manage to have more than one spin, you can make them talk to each other and they can work in parallel and you can take advantage of this shared superposition between many spins and work in parallel, for example, for quantum computing. So we're using a carbon nanotube to trap our electrons, so it's like a very small piece of crystal. It is so small that it's possible to trap one electron and then we apply these magnetic fields that would allow us to control the spin in the 3D space and then measure it. We are in the clean room. That's where we fabricate the artificial nanocircuits to manipulate our spins. This machine is a scanning electron microscope and with that you can both image very thin structure and you can also fabricate them. Even if you use computers, at some point there must be a contact. Because we are macroscopic, we need a transition until the microscopic world. So from the rack of electronic device in the lab, you have cables going down in the cryostat, coming on the chip, and then it follows the electrical path of the electrodes, approach closer and closer. Now they arrive on the nanotube and they define two portions of tube, which are like uh, boxes for electrons. What we want is that they split and one electron goes in one box and the other in the other box. And these two thinner electrodes there, they are used to manipulate the device. Uh, they are like buttons to make the electrons move uh, from one box to another and to control the system. And that's where our spins are going to dance. You can see here the superconducting contact, which is a natural source for Cooper pairs, which are pairs of two electrons with two spins which point in opposite directions. And our purpose is to inject these Cooper pairs inside the carbon nanotube by splitting them and sending the two electrons on both sides of the superconducting contact to push these two electrons very far away, one from each other. So we can imagine that these two electrons are two gyroscopes, one in Paris and one in Los Angeles, and these two gyroscopes are in the spin entangled state. It means that if in Paris I measure uh, one spin direction for my gyroscope, in Los Angeles people will know immediately the result of the measurement I did, because if I measure the down spin state in Paris, the state of my gyroscope will be instantaneously projected into the up spin state in Los Angeles, and vice versa. If we can produce and manipulate that kind of uh, very basic two-particle state, we could imagine to do many more complex things. So uh, doing that is a fundamental interest because uh, this tells us how we go from the microscopic world to the macroscopic world. But uh, application-wise, it could provide a very interesting platform in order to build more complex machines which would exploit quantum mechanics. <laughs>